I'm David Kahn here with another question from topic 6.1. We're going to be looking at forces in circular motion. What we have in this case is uh, a ball hanging from a string which is fixed to the ceiling. And the ball is spinning in a circle like so. The question asks us a couple of things. It's, it says first on the diagram, draw and label arrows to represent the forces on the ball in the position shown. So we want to think about what are the forces acting on the ball in this case. Well, it's hanging from a string and uh, gravity is pulling it down from the ceiling. So the first force that I might draw is the force of gravity, which is called the ball's weight. Now, the force which is keeping it from reaching the floor is the tension in the string. And strings always provide tension along their length. So not directly up, but along the length of the string. Now, how long should this vector be? Well, it should be long enough that the vertical component of the vector matches the weight. Because the ball is not moving up or down, it's moving horizontally. So the vertical component of the tension should be just as long as the weight which means the tension should be about this long. The tension winds up being a little bit longer than the weight. The tension from the string winds up being a slightly bigger force than the weight of the ball. Uh, are there any other forces? Well, it's traveling in a, in a circular path, which suggests to us that there ought to be some centripetal force. Uh, so we might be tempted to draw a third force in this direction, for the centripetal force. But we need to think, what is it that's supplying the centripetal force? It, it has to be something. What is causing the ball to move in the circular path? What's pushing it? There is no gravitational force. There is no thing pulling it this way, except the string. The centripetal force is actually the horizontal component of the tension what's left over from the tension after we subtract away the weight. So there is a centripetal force, and it is directly in towards the center of the circle, but it's not one of the unique forces acting on the ball. There's only two. There's the weight and the tension, and the sum of those two forces winds up being a centripetal force towards the direction of the center of the circle. Uh, but it's really only these two forces that are the unique individual forces acting on the ball. Part two asks us to explain and state whether the ball is in equilibrium. Well, is the ball in equilibrium? The answer is a, a very serious no. The ball is not in equilibrium because the sum of the forces on the ball don't equal zero. And we know that. We know that the sum of the forces don't equal zero because when we look at these two forces, one is down and one is up and to the right, there is no force to the left or component to the left to balance the rightward component of the tension. So there's no way these two forces, no matter how long each one is, there's no way these two forces can add up to zero. So the ball can't be in equilibrium. Another reason the ball can't be in equilibrium is because it's moving in a circle. And because it's moving in a circle, It's accelerating. The ball is moving in a circle. To move in a circle, your velocity has to change. The direction of your velocity has to be constantly changing, which means you must be accelerating. And if you're accelerating, you're not in equilibrium.